I could probably do a whole series of videos on different leather case handles and straps and things that I've used to attach to cases and purses and various things. Um, I did a video, um, well, not too long ago, sometime over the summer, I believe, where I used this pattern uh, to put a handle on a water bottle that I carry around on a regular basis. And this is based on a pattern that's kind of my go-to, say, favorite case handle that I've used for gun cases and uh, a backpack that I carry around, actually several backpacks that I've made. And even at one point, I put it on a handle on a harness for a dog, which is actually what I'm doing again to make a, a handle that the owner can grab onto and control the dog better than just a leash would do, um, you know, as it's learning manners. I mean, obviously the ba but, most basic handle is just a straight strap of leather. Uh, and this is a little bit more than that. And it's even a little bit more uh, complicated than it would look at first glance. Because it's not perfectly symmetrical like you would think it is. Um, one side of this is actually a little bit longer than the other side. It's about the thickness of the leather um, that you're going to be using. A little bit wider. So if you're using 8 ounce leather, this side's going to be an eighth of an inch further out than this side is. And also you add about your thickness of your leather and a little bit more even past that and taper it in because these pieces are going to be tapered in and skived. And you want this to be enough to go around that thickness as well. And of course, when you're using a thick piece of leather like this, it doesn't fold easily, and since this is latigo, you can't even wet it down to get it to fold. A piece of edge tan you'd be able to wet down. So I'm going to take this chunk of leather I've already got cut out, and I'm going to start doing some skiving and make it to where I can use this as a case handle. And the assembly of it will be fairly simple once we get to it. Some glue, and then just one line of stitching right down the middle. Okay, first things first, we're going to do a bunch of skiving. These pieces need to skive down to a feather edge. So that tapers off nice and neat. So when we put it in here, we won't have a big lump that suddenly ends in the middle of our handle. We want it to taper out nice and smooth in there. We'll do that. So now I need to skive the longer side of this. So as I mentioned before, one side of this, about an inch and a quarter. So about twice the thickness of the leather, plus the one inch that this is going to be. It's only about an inch and an eighth down here or so. Uh, this other side is closer to an inch and a half. Got some extra added on to that one so that it can wrap over top of this one. So this is the side that I need to skive. And I've got it marked on my pattern like that. I've got lines along those edges and it's written skive. And I could lay the pattern on there and figure it out too. But anyway, that piece needs to taper out as well. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to do on skiving, you can also do this with a gouge, is I want some lines across here to make a place where it's going to fold easier. Uh, like I said, you could use a round uh, U gouge or a V gouge for that. Probably a U gouge would work better. But what I find works even best is to take something round, like a chunk of PVC pipe, in this case half inch, that I can just kind of fold this over backwards basically make myself a line that I can follow. Fingers out. And instead of using a knife or something, I'm going to use uh, this tool. It's called a French edge skiver. It's like a really big, thick um, edge beveler. And since I'm on that rounded surface, instead of just on a flat surface, it's just going to glide across the top and not take anything off. That rounded surface lets you take just a little bit off of there. And if you want to take a whole bunch and make a deep gouge, then you fold it back like this and just hold it. I 
and you'll make a deeper gouge there. So however much you got it wrapped around will make a difference. Uh, I've also done this on the edge of uh, my marble slab. Just push it over that corner. And you can run along it. And basically make yourself a thin spot in the leather where it's going to fold easier. And you just keep going until you get it where you want it. Okay, now I need a couple pieces of hardware that are going to go on each end of this before we stitch it together. In there. So yeah, that D-ring will attach in. These will fold over it. Everything will stitch together and that's what holds it all together. Anyway, before we glue it up, let's go ahead and rough some areas up. Just need a sharp knife. I'm going to use my new trim knife for it. So, all this stuff is rough. It's on the back side of the leather. But we got to also remember, this piece is going to be folded in, and then this other piece has to be glued to it. And these pieces are going to be folded in and have to be glued to it. So before we start making a mess with the glue, let's go ahead and just scrape these. You can use sandpaper or something too, but this is usually good enough. Just opens up that surface enough. Okay, when we stick this together, we want to make sure that enough of it sticks out the side that that D-ring is not stuck in the middle, basically. So it should kind of stick out about like that. That seems to be sticking okay. Gentle persuasion with the mallet, with the hammer. And we'll grab some of these. I've got these big, huge paper clamps, one binder clamps. That I use for stuff just like this. And if you remember, I mentioned we're going to have a line of stitching down the middle. We'll try and get our clamps there so that the stitching hides any marks the clamps leave. Okay, let's let that glue set up a bit. Okay, quick trip downstairs to run some stitching through the center of it. So it's all together. And this produces, you know, nice round edges where that leather is folded over. Everything feels good and smooth in the hand. Uh, that end where we skived everything, you can see it, there's no big bump there for you to catch on. So you don't feel that edge of that leather in there. That's why we went ahead and skived it all down. You can, of course, do this handle without doing that, but like I said, it'll feel rougher on the back when you grab onto it. It won't feel nice and smooth. Now, the different ways that you can attach this to a case, of course, anytime you can just use a strap. And that strap can go through both of these and be riveted down. 
in the center and on the outside of it however you want it to be and just rivet it the strap can be just folded bits that wrap through and those can rivet on or those can go through a slot cut in the leather and rivet onto the the back side of it where just this part sticks up the method I will usually use is the shield shapes um, this one's a little harder to use you have to basically skive all the sides or something and then you have to fold the leather piece fold these wings in and get them through that that d-ring um, but it is a possibility this is the one I use most often or one a variation like this it goes through there and the leather piece it'll rivet on and then you put it on the case and you just stitch this shield shape to the outside of the case and I've been making those for a long time because I have a backpack here that I made probably 15 years ago or so that has this style of handle on it and it's been used a lot and abused a lot it's made out of thinner leather than this one was this is only about six ounce leather uh, six to seven and this one was about eight to nine uh, but generally the same idea the same shield shape I was just talking about only one rivet instead of two but like I said I've been making those a long time and that's kind of my favorite case handle and in this case it's going to go in our dog harness to be able to control the dog a little bit better that's why I'm making it out of latigo so it's a good outdoor leather <laughs>